In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Thursday after Ash Wednesday, we take a moment to call to mind our sins, asking God for the grace to truly recognize just how important this Lenten season is. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them by your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I read him from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways, and keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, and bless, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish." You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsels of the wicked nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prop prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the second day of Lent, it's interesting our Gospel reading because Jesus addresses two different crowds in this Gospel reading. I don't know if you caught it. First, he said to his disciples, And then he said to all. And I think this is really critical for us in our Lenten journey. Because we don't want to be part of the all group, we want to be part of the disciples group. And notice the all message, which is the second message. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world? yet lose or forfeit himself. That's the message for everyone. That's like the the basic entry, if you will. That's the most critical, basic conversion that's needed to become a disciple. And Jesus addresses this to everyone because in many ways the disciples have already done this at this point in leaving everything in following Christ. But there is a second step once they have chosen to deny themselves, and that is, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And see, this is, if you will, the secret that's not supposed to be a secret. But this is a message that everyone cannot hear. They do not understand because in many ways it is the all who does this. And so this is really the conversion that we are called to in Lent. Hopefully it's a single conversion, not a double conversion. The first, of course, is to deny ourselves. The second is to really come to understand the mission of Christ here on earth and how he is coming to die by the elders, chief priests, and the scribes, but be raised. And so too our faith, my brothers and sisters, is very much rejected by many who are in power, rejected by many who would expect to be the learned and the wise. But yet, we need to be the ones who are disciples to truly come to understand why it must be this way. And see, that answer is found in our first reading from Moses. Moses who's pretty much given his last speech to the people before dying, before they enter into the promised land. And Moses basically says, I set behind you a blessing, set before you a blessing or a curse. If you follow God, keeping his commandments, you will live. If you turn away, you will die. Now, this is not God giving a threat. This is God stating the reality. Because life without God is death, just like a room without light is darkness. And for us, it's very important that we realize that the choice that we have is a true choice. But yet, it's not a choice that leads to two goods. And I think for us, this choice of faith, for many, can be very, very difficult because we think living the faith is death, living the commandments is death, living the faith and self-denial is death. But that's not death. That's living well in the land that God has entrusted to us. That is keeping his commandments. And quite frankly, it's not even close to death because it brings life. But see, we ourselves are given God's mercy. Jesus shows us that in death there is life. And he has died that death for us, that we need not die it anymore. But for us, it's important that we see the difference between the message of the all and the disciple. And we can see that the message of the all is very much Moses' message as well. That this is a critical step that we need to take if we are going to be a disciple of Christ. I think in each of our lives, this takes a different pattern, a different look. Yes, it's all Christ. Yes, it all models his passion, suffering, death, and resurrection. But yet for each of us, 
to truly recognize who Christ is, suffering, dying, and rising among us, looks a bit different, feels a little bit different because of our own life experience and the way that God has made us to be individuals. But then again, for each of us, is when we come together as a group of disciples that we truly recognize the totality of Christ's gift and the beauty of his message in a greater fullness. And this is why it's important that we continue to gather together in this Lenten season. One of the powerful devotions that we highlight during Lent is the Stations of the Cross. And we'll be praying that together as a parish uh, this Friday, tomorrow, as we really remember Christ's suffering and death for us. It'll also be here on YouTube. But I just encourage us, as we live out this day, being very mindful of the practices that we have promised to undertake, that we do not lose heart on the second day, that we do not tire, but that we really have a great enthusiasm to truly come to understand Christ's mission here on earth, that we may understand our own calls, and that we may radiate the message that he has for all because we have come to appreciate the message that he has given to us as disciples. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, we come to this Mass. Let us offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William. Pray that the Church may always spread the good news of Christ that he has shared with all, that we may truly be his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those without hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that during this Lenten season, our youth and all families may truly take this time seriously and truly turn towards the gospel in radical and meaningful ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day. We pray in a special way for Margaret Pysig, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful to you, that we may truly recognize the ways that you are calling us to conversion through showing who you are to us. Help us come to grasp who we are in your light, that in your light we may see the true life that is being offered to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings we set upon the sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to O Lord our God. It is truly right and just for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us the source of both pardon and of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. Almighty God, you have made known to your people the ways of eternal life. Lead them by the path, that path we pray, to your unfading light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who power about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay warm.